attention CDL drivers in Tuscarawas County. Kimball wants you to join their team, enjoy fantastic benefits, incentive pay, industry-leading wages, and be home with your family every night. Apply today at KimballCompanies.com slash careers. Kimball, recycling and disposal done right. Talk and Trash, where we try to answer all your questions about recycling and proper waste disposal in Tuscarawas County. I'm your host, Hannah Hartman, and joining me is my go-to expert on all things recycling here in Tuscarawas County, my sister, Rachel Rodocker. Hi, Rachel. Hello. Uh, Rachel is a passionate advocate for recycling and sustainable practices, and she has worked in our local recycling industry for several years, so her behind-the-scenes knowledge on the subject of how to recycle properly in Tuscarawas County is vast, and it is what will guide our ongoing discussions here on the Talking Trash podcast. Mm-hmm. So this episode, this is our first episode, and it is being recorded on February 6th, 2024. And because rules and regulations change over time, some of what we discuss may have changed by the time you hear this. But with that caveat, let's dumpster dive into this discussion. <laughs> okay, forgive my pun. Sorry. Okay, Rachel, um, <laughs> I just want to start with the basics. This is episode one. Uh, The whole goal here is to help people here in Tuscarawas County who want to recycle properly. So let's talk about just the very basics of what our local recycling district will accept here in Tuscarawas County. Sure thing. Um, And I do want to clarify, too, that if some of you are listening from Dover, Ohio, or New Philadelphia, Ohio, or Yorksville, you might have a curbside program as well. We have public drop-off sites throughout the county, and also some of the communities have curbside sites. There might be slight variations in what they say they'll take, but the majority of them are taken by the same company, so the standards are the same. Um, What we see is I like to think of it as like giving someone a high five. There's like five categories of acceptable materials, especially at our public drop offs, but also in your curbside bins. Mm -hmm. And that would be paper products, Mm -hmm. cardboard, metal cans, uh, glass bottles and jars and plastic bottles and jugs. So those are kind of the big five, the main things that are acceptable, the main things that can get sorted out. So that's always a good starting point. First, kind of familiarize yourself with what what they want, what they're after. A next thing I like to tell people is about, we call it the hierarchy. Uh, You've probably heard the phrase reduce, reuse, recycle. I think Hannah's shirt kind Uh of has that on it. Um, The hierarchy has changed over the years. Some people add in other words even. Mm -hmm. I like to throw in to refuse. That is to turn away something if you don't need it because that will – ultimately reduce the waste. It kind of goes back to reduce, but you can re-gift, you can repair, you can, there's all these R words. A lot of re's that we can work in, yeah. (laughs) But the thing that I really like to stress is that recycling isn't the answer. It's not even the top of the hierarchy. It's the one right before trash. Really, you want to think about reducing the waste in the first place. Mm -hmm. And then once you get, okay, I have this waste, can I re, how many times can I reuse it or, Mm -hmm. or donate it so someone else can reuse it? Only at the very end, do you want to think about, okay, I need to actually break this down into its components and turn it back into something else. It's a valuable thing. We need recycling. Uh, However, I want to try to (laughs) stress that you should change how you think about the hierarchy of recycling. Yeah, I think that's important to point out because I think a lot of us kind of think of recycling as the first option instead of the last option when there are so many other things you could do to keep whatever that material is out of – specifically out of the landfill, but yes. really just out of the recycling process. Um, like you said, it really should kind of be the last thing that you do before yes. repairing or refusing or all of those things. Of course. And um, then another thing with the basics too, um, you might hear people throw around the term or well, the word MRF and not know what that means. Yeah, I'm here to tell you what it means. <laughs> it's the materials recovery facility. Okay. So all the recycling that uh, all your waste haulers, as long as you use the big one in the mm-hmm. area, it goes up to a MRF up in Twinsburg, Ohio. The materials recovery facility is where it gets sorted back into the individual category. Mm -hmm. So we have what we call single stream recycling, which is throwing all your materials, all your paper, your glass, your cardboard, everything in one container. And then ultimately it has to all get (laughs) sorted out. So uh, up at the materials recovery facility, it's a combination of very expensive equipment and 
people. <laughs> yeah. Um, sometimes the people are necessary, like right. It's a huge conveyor belt. They throw all the stuff they've gathered either from the public drop off sites or from your curbside bin mm-hmm. comes on a truck. It gets dumped onto a conveyor belt. The very first line is people and it's people pulling out things that are going to jam up the equipment. So yeah. they literally have talked about pulling out crowbars, <laughs> guns, oh. syringes. Oh. I mean, these terrible, dangerous things yeah. for one. And it halts the process every time they have to stop sorting because something gets tangled or something is dangerous yeah. it's think about how that's and it puts people's lives at risk too yeah. um there's also materials that they pull out kind of closer to the beginning that we refer to as tanglers which mm-hmm. i'm sure we'll get into in future episodes oh, yes. a little more but Stay tuned. truly things that get tangled up in the equipment again they have to shut it down once you get further in the process however it's very cool technologies that can pull out different things. There's these big rolling combines and that's what pulls out the light paper and throws it up on one belt. Mm -hmm. And then it goes to another line with more people who make sure it's a clean product in the end. And then uh, what keeps moving along the line will eventually go to these big rolling magnets that'll pull out, you know, all the metals that are magnetic. um, And then metals that aren't magnetic go a different place. Mm -hmm. It's like the tin versus the aluminum kind of going different spots. Mm -hmm. Uh, Toward the end, you actually have, they're called, uh, it's optical scanners and eddy currents, and it's literally scanning the types of plastics, figuring out how dense they are, and then different puffs of air, essentially, are sending them to different conveyor wow. belts. So that is uh, when you think about HDPE plastic or PETE plastic. They all have a different density, and so they get <laughs> blown up by this air to these different spots. So It's fascinating. Sometimes I think... Um, seeing the MRF or go to Google, you can find if you put in a materials recovery facility, there's some available to watch on there. It really helps clear things up for you whenever you're going to sort your recyclables because Mm -hmm. you can determine, oh yeah, this isn't recyclable because it's so tiny, it would immediately fall through the grate at the recycling facility Mm -hmm. or, oh, my plastic lawn chair Clearly, like, that's not going to make it through to these eddy currents, not the same kind of plastic. This is designed for household recycling. We usually say the rule of thumb is things you can get at a grocery store. Yeah. So kind of in preparation for uh, the Talking Trash podcast, Mm -hmm. I actually got to take a tour of the the MRF. And, yeah, it is very Mm eye-opening. I think so many of us... I'm not trying to place blame or anything. I, we're just so removed from that process. Yes. You know, you, you throw it in the bin and then you forget about it. Um, but when you actually see the the machinery at work, plus plus the human element, all the people who are yes. removing things that are going to stop the machine and, and just trying to manually sort things, it really does help you better understand because ultimately what they're trying to get at the end of this is a usable product that yes. can be then, you know, sold to it. Um, what would you call like we the, call them the markets, the markets. I mean, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Back so to yeah, when you, uh, I, I hate to think about people who put things that are very obviously not recyclable, uh, that, that, that has to be pulled from the MRF and, yes. and yeah, it's your dirty diaper is never going to get recycled <laughs> no. in anything else. So just throw in the trash, yes. but, but yeah, it is, it, it does help kind of clarify what, what the goal is here with recycling and, and what we're able to do. I do want to clarify that, you know, the whole idea of this podcast, as I mentioned in the intro, is that we're trying to help people who are trying to do things right here in Tuscarawas County. Correct. A lot of materials are theoretically recyclable, just not here in our community. And so, you know, when you throw something that you, you think is recyclable and, and, and may be recyclable somewhere else, if it's not on that, that, that high five list that we were talking mm-hmm. about, it's going to end up in the trash here in our community. And so we're just trying to kind of help things out by eliminating all that stuff from being put in your bin in the first place. Right? Yes. And when recycling became very popular, um, I mean, it's a, there's always been a place for it. But really in the 90s, there were booms. All these communities were adding recycling programs. The companies that had developed these MRFs uh, said, oh, just throw everything in there because they just wanted as much as possible. Quantity, quantity, quantity. Uh, our, our sophisticated machines and our people will sort it all out. It's all good to go. Well, then there was this change to the to the global market. It's mm-hmm. called the national sword. And it basically anything that would get through the process and was just kind of this mixed <laughs> 
trash is really what it was, but just kind of mixed material that didn't get sorted out. We would, you know, eventually it would get shipped to China and they would pay people to like go through and sort it out. But then they, in 2016, 17, they, they started implementing these policies saying, we're not taking your trash anymore. It's, it's, we don't want it. So yeah, really the value went down. And so it's like we created this problem by having this system of, oh, quantity, 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 single stream, throw it all together. We moved away from people sorting it at home, which really would be the most efficient, but clearly you need more trucks, you need more containers, just everything that goes with it. But yeah, we created this monster that's kind of out of control. And I feel like, yeah, we've been trying to kind of walk that back ever since that that major shift happened. So yeah, again, if you're listening to this uh, right now, and you're still stuck in that like 2015 or earlier mentality. Mm -hmm. It it just doesn't work that way anymore, but we're, we're trying to help you here. We're we're not trying to blame you. We're just trying to help. So, um, so since since we've covered kind of the basics, Rachel, I do want to, we'd like to structure our podcast Mm -hmm. uh, with different, uh, sections each time. So I want to move into what we're going to do is kind of focus on one material in every episode and, and sort of hit different elements, uh, surrounding, that particular material. So I want to talk about glass specifically. Okay. And I had asked you what you wanted to start with. And, and you said glass because that's when you get uh, some of the most confusion or, or misunderstanding about, right? Yes. Okay. Um, it's actually interesting if you're on the industry side, because glass is infinitely recyclable. Hmm. Metals are infinitely recyclable. You could keep recycling these over and over again. However, with glass, uh, there's different colors, right? There's right. brown glass, there's green, there's clear. They all have different melting points. They all were different things. Um, the way that we collect right now without sorting and just throwing everything together, you could not recycle those that all those shards of different colors of glass right. back into those original types of containers because they're all different compositions. So I like to talk about glass because I think it does kind of force you to think about um, – here is this mixture of all this stuff. There still could be uses for it. There's still, there's a a local brick company that they are permitted to use a certain percentage of glass in their bricks. It's an allowable use. Uh, They can also use some other industrial byproducts. It's a way that they can kind of recycle some of this material. Um, But shy of something like that, you just, it doesn't get recycled the way you would think of as recycling. So let me jump in here for a second, because I'm your your average Jane here uh, thinking I I know how recycling works, okay, with with (laughs) no expert knowledge or anything. So you're telling me that they don't just melt all of that glass down into a a new um, material that can be shaped into new glass for new bottles and and it doesn't work that way? It does not unless you work and locally we don't have a company like this, but in other areas they still do sort it by type. In Mm -hmm. other uh, states when they take back glass, sometimes they have you take it back by type. Uh, Like I have seen that in other Deposit programs and in those cases they really could break it down and turn it back in. But the way we take it here, which is all commingled and all commingled with every other type of product, not just glass, it usually just becomes either it can be incorporated into bricks or other materials like that. Um, there is also some EPA approved, they call them beneficial uses for glass. And some of them are kind of funny because here it is, you're trying to avoid this glass going into a landfill. <laughs> and literally one of the beneficial uses is as a layer in the landfill. Now it, it's a beneficial layer. It mm-hmm. helps with drainage of leachate and things like that. But still here we are <laughs> doing our part to wash it out, right. clean it, Keep throw it in the, the bin. Yeah. It takes a journey to Twinsburg and then it goes back yeah. to the landfill. Not all of it. That is just a, a small portion. Right. There yeah. again, it's more limited uses, but glass I like to talk about because I think it's one you would think, oh, it's such an easy mm-hmm. think back to you know milkman and you would get a bottle right, and you'd yeah. exchange them. It's just not the reality. So if uh, if it doesn't end up as a, a beneficial uh, use in a landfill, what happens with? stuff that doesn't end up in that layer. I mean, it just depends on where the markets are at the time. So like if, if the companies who are collecting the recyclables can sell it to a, you know, a local brick making company or someone that can incorporate it, they're clearly going to want to make the money first, but Mm -hmm. then they will go to the beneficial uses. And then of course, at the very bottom of the hierarchy is just that, you know, it'll get thrown away. Now we're lucky in this region to have good partners that sometimes will hold on to the materials until the markets bounce back instead of just throwing them away because they have these contracts in place that say the material is going to get recycled or repurposed. Mm -hmm. So we're lucky in that way. But yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, (laughs) if it doesn't have a use at some point, it could just become trash. Yeah. And I, I don't know if 
you'll know the answer to this. I assume you will, but, um, you know, if I, if I throw a, a glass bottle in my recycle bin, but it breaks at some point. So now it's not a bottle, it's broken shards of glass. How does that change things? How does that it really work. doesn't because like once it if as long as it gets to the murph so that is assuming it doesn't fall out of a truck or fall all out these of your shards bin or, falling you know, out yeah, yeah. Um, but once it gets to the murph it ultimately all gets broken down together okay so. okay cool um so I, I, I want to move on to a section that we're gonna again try to work in every episode called common questions because mm -hmm. I know there's <laughs> Always a lot of questions when it comes, and it's partly because rules change over time yeah. and people are just trying to stay up on the latest. But one of the most common questions you said that you get is, why do I have to separate my recyclables and put them in different bins when I drop them off at a public recycling site if they're all picked up by the same truck? Yes, so that is the top <laughs> question we get on our social media, you know, on social media, things yeah. like that. Um, the very, the answer is, if you think about sorting material and you're paying attention to what is truly acceptable, then you're a lot less likely to contaminate a whole load of clean recyclables with things that are not acceptable. So a good example is we used to have, there used to be drop offs that had containers that said, oh, co-mingle it. It was single stream, throw everything in. Well, then we would have people say, well, I'm going to throw my microwave in because that has glass and that has plastic and that has metal. And those, those are all recyclable, recyclable things. things. Yeah. And so the, we're, they're we're moving away from saying mixed recyclables, commingled. If you have to think about separating, which, yes, is more work on the front end, asking the person, people will complain about it. I don't want to do the work. I tell the people, then we don't want your recyclables. I mean, that's a truth. If you if you don't want to follow the process so that the, the end material is clean enough to actually get recyclables, then we don't want you to inc include it. Because again, it <laughs> a lot less about quantity now, it's quality now. Mm -hmm. So that is, yeah, it's a good question because yes, there is one truck that pick up, picks up all those things. Now I will say in some of the surrounding counties, um, they do still run two routes. They do still have a paper route that takes the paper and cardboard bins to a different processor. And then they have, you know, the, we, the co-mingle. They still call it the co-mingle, but it's the metal and plastic and glass route that goes to a separate. So in an ideal world, if it weren't so costly to have multiple routes, you really would be collecting them separately yeah. and taking them to separate places. But that's, again, not the reality of the area. So you're saying area. By, by asking people to do that, it's it's just... E even though it ends up in the same truck, it's helping to reduce the amount of unrecyclable exactly. material. Yes. Yeah. Just by making them think about it a little bit, pretty exactly. much. Yeah. Yes. Okay. <laughs> that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, this is something that benefits all of us. So we have to work together following the rules that, that you know, work for our area. And yeah, if somebody comes along, you know, it's funny that somebody would like want to do the right thing by yes. recycling, but in the end do totally the wrong thing. Exactly. You know, so. Like most of the people that we would see are breaking the rules aren't intentionally doing so. Now you do have egregious dumpers or just dumping mattresses, but what, what we did see at recycling sites specifically is that people lead but well, people follow by example. So if they're looking in a container and it's nothing but cans, there is a lot less confusion about what's acceptable in that right, container. Oh, it's yeah. cans. It's the can container. So, yeah. yeah. Well, so now that we're on that topic, we're going to move to a, a section uh, of our podcast that we're going to call dumpster diving. And, <laughs> um, you know, we, we do have a recycling dumpster uh, at WJR. Now, it's not open to the public, so don't go throwing your recyclables in there. But uh, I, I am trying to get my coworkers to understand these rules, these basics that, that we've gone over. But I've noticed that some of them have a little bit of trouble. Um, they, they may be doing that wish cycling thing. We're going to, yeah. we're going to get to that in a, in a future, uh, a podcast dive into mm -hmm. the wish cycling thing, but you can kind of, kind of understand what, what, what that means. If you've never heard the term, you really wish that this thing could be recyclable. Yes. So you're going to throw it in there, but it's not recyclable. So, uh, before we came over to our podcast studio, I, I went out to the WJR recycling dumpster and, and just to see if there was anything in there that really is trash and not recyclable and wouldn't you know I found a couple things? So, Rachel, <laughs> I, I'm going to pull uh, – I have three items for you, okay. and I, wanna, I wanna, just want to talk about each one uh, a little bit here, okay? Okay. <laughs> Let's see so we'll got. start with a styrofoam egg container. Gotcha. Okay? Now, 
Do not put that in that container <laughs> trash, is what right? I'll start with. <laughs> if it were cardboard, you could recycle it. My favorite use for egg cartons is actually working with local farmers and giving yes. them back. I actually do that at the farmer's market. I yeah. save right now. I have 20 egg containers at home <laughs> that I'll give to a farmer, give them back. Um, the reason – so uh, styrofoam is interesting because uh, it could be recycled. It has the potential to be recycled. They can condense foams and repelletize them and reuse them in a way – that is not what they're doing locally, locally though. Right. So styrofoam, trash. Okay. <laughs> uh, I'm going to pull these next two out at the same time because they're, I think, kind of along the same okay. lines, okay? <laughs> Put me to the test. Yes, okay. Mm -hmm. Let's see. So oh, this trash. is like a gum container, you know? Plastic gum container. And okay. then like a tray from maybe like a pack of cookies or something yeah. like that. Yeah, these are interesting. So uh -huh. I'll comment on both these because like you said... They have similarities. They're yeah. both plastic, obviously. Right. I think someone's initial instinct might be, I'm going to look and see, is there a chasing arrow on it? However, and like this one has one. And when you, you say chasing arrows, you mean this logo. That logo. Yeah, on my shirt. However, okay. I'll say that you're really, those are not for the consumers. The chasing arrows are not really there to tell us it's recyclable. What they are is is trying to say what kind of plastic resin coat it is. So like this one, you can hear me doing this. It's a brittle... It's almost the same material as the clamshell containers, like strawberries and things would come mm -hmm. in. These are not the same kind of plastic. The ones they really want are bottles and jugs. Clearly, this is not best. This is going to just shatter and not make it through the process okay. at the MRF. So okay. essentially, that's why that one is not. This one is fascinating because I'm guessing that it's a kind of plastic that's a marketable plastic. I can't even see the number on it. Hmm. And again, we're not really supposed to look at it, but to help, right. I think it's a number two, which is typically the same. You got like milk jugs, laundry to detergent bottles, those are usually like ones and twos, and they're a rigid plastic that can be recycled again. However, the size of this is telling me it likely won't make it through the process. They generally say the rule of thumb is if it's like credit card length or size or smaller, that it's just not going to make it through. <laughs> See, this is helpful because like you said, it's it's a, maybe a similar or the same type of plastic you would uh, use for like a laundry detergent bottle, which mm -hmm. is recyclable, right? Yes. Yeah. But the problem being that's all well and good, but the size might Could not be a problem now. Right. And if you look at it, um, another rule of thumb, they say is, does the container have a neck and shoulders? Right. This one kind of has a neck. The shoulder <laughs> doesn't really go out. Mm -hmm. So if you're really trying to stick to the letter of the law, I wouldn't include it. it at the very least, if this happened to make it through the process, it likely would still get lumped in with recyclable pr plastics and get recycled. Okay. It's just that it probably won't. So it, that one to me is a little bit more of a judgment call. But yeah. <laughs> So if you're someone like me who definitely for, for a period of time fell into that wish cycling mentality and I thought, ah, I think maybe I'm going to throw it in. I'm really trying to kind of undo that within myself yes. because like you said, they want quality recycling. It's not about, obviously I'm trying to do as much as I can to eliminate trash, right? Yes. <laughs> and, and, and that's why I want it to be recyclable. But if I really want recycling to happen in the best way with the best end product, it's Better that I don't put that through the process. When in doubt, throw it out. We're going to hit those say. fun <laughs> phrases over and over again. All right. So with that, let's move on to a section we're going to call, what's the word? Okay. Okay. And since this is episode one of Talking Trash, we're going to start with recyclable. recyclable. <laughs> so how do you want to define recyclable for the purposes of our podcast? Well, for the purposes of this podcast, I will say that recyclable means it's something that is acceptable in the local recycling stream. Um, in order to be considered recyclable, you really must have the infrastructure to accept it, to sort it, to bail it, to get it to where it's going to go and a end market for it. So uh, people might hear the word recyclable and think, well, like any kind of plastic is recyclable. You know, any kind of metal is recyclable. It The way I like to frame it differently is, does it have the potential to be recycled or can it be recycled locally? Mm -hmm. So yeah. when we talk about recyclable, I usually am meaning, you know, it, it can be recycled locally. It is okay. acceptable. So <laughs> moving forward with the Talking Trash podcast, when we say recyclable, yes. that's how we are defining it. We so. can keep reminding you because yes, I know it's will. confusing. For sure. <laughs> uh, 
with that, I'd like to move on to the next section, which we're going to call simple solutions. And I love this because I, when we were talking about this before, we had sort of like obvious examples like mm. use a reusable grocery bag and, and carry a, a reusable straw. And like, I think most people have at least heard of that yes. <laughs> by this point. And if there's somebody who is uh, serious about, you know, they're doing it. Yeah, yeah. they're already doing it. So yeah. <laughs> I wanted to come up with maybe some ideas people might not have thought of. And so the, the first one we want to introduce on episode one of Talking Trash is create a car kit. Do yes. you have a car kit yourself? Yes. Okay. Mine is kind of minimal at the moment. That's okay. But, what is in your minimal car kit? My minimal car kit does have some of the things you were talking about. I always have reusable, a reusable tote. I always have reusable straws, a spoon, a fork. It sounds silly, but literally two days ago, I was with my son at a McDonald's and he was eating a slushy and he wanted a spoon and they <laughs> couldn't find a spoon. And I was like, okay, I have a spoon in my purse, silly as it sounds. Hey, but perfect. Um, there are other things you can keep that certain local businesses will work with you on like a reusable coffee mug mm-hmm. certain local coffee places might let you use that yeah. or I know there's a local smoothie place that will let you bring in <laughs> reusable cups for smoothies nice. so that you can kind of reduce your overall impact um, something else I occasionally have although it might not be in there at the moment <laughs> is a uh, like a, a Tupperware or something where if you get leftovers at a restaurant you or a doggy bag instead of using theirs you do get looks I'm not gonna yeah. lie it's not always easy to be green well, uh, it, contrary it, to what Kermit <laughs> says <laughs> Well, and I think that, you know, that is a perfect opportunity to um, address who I think probably our audience for this yes. podcast <laughs> is. I don't know that everybody is um, as excited about recycling yes. as we are, but I know that there are people out there in our community who are trying their best. And yes. if there's a simple solution that they could incorporate into their lives, maybe they just never thought about c- keeping a carry out container with them. But like you said, on the whole, <laughs> you're you're kind of a trailblazer in this community yes. when you're trying to implement those. I, I I think I've even gotten a few looks just using a <laughs> reusable straw out of like carry one in my purse, pull oh, it yeah, out. Yeah. But then you, you know you'll have people who say, "Oh, that's so cool," you know. So yeah, it, you you might need to be prepared for some strange stares, <laughs> but you, you never know who's watching. But, but it is yeah. it is almost about shifting the mindset. Well, one trying not to care what other people think, but that's a whole other mm. topic for a different <laughs> podcast. Probably uh, the other part is uh, the convenience element. Everyone loves yeah. the convenience of getting a grocery bag or a plastic straw that you use for 30 seconds and then throw yeah. it away. Of course, it's convenient. But yeah. sometimes you do have to if you want to try to make a little difference in your circle or in this community or in this world, you, you do have to think ahead a little bit and that's plan true. ahead. Yeah. So. <laughs> and with that, I do want to start to wrap things up. And I'd like to try to end each episode of Talking Trash with a little bit of good news. Um, <laughs> world can be a scary place uh, these days, but there's always good news out there. And of course, we're going to try to focus on things that are uh, related to recycling and sustainability. Um, so can you talk a little bit about the waste characterization study for Ohio? Yes. Um, there was one done many years ago by the Ohio Department of Natural Resources. And what they did was they picked large landfills, well, different size landfills all over the state and literally studied the loads that were coming in. They had a a process how they chose the loads and landfills and all that. And what they were trying to determine is truly what was going into these landfills, how much of it had the potential, that's the same word, potential to be diverted from the landfill if we had the infrastructure and the markets and everything like that. Mm -hmm. So there was a study done years ago with that, and there more recently was a study done specifically at the Central Ohio Landfill. The Solid Waste Authority in Central Ohio has their own landfill, so they conducted their own study. And generally, they had the same results. Uh, The good news of sorts is that around three quarters of the materials that went into these landfills that were in these loads were actually, they had the potential to be recycled potential. or composted. Oh, okay. I will say that because food waste was a huge portion and, you know, that is not something you can throw in our bins. Please don't throw that in bins or in your We'll dive into bin. that in a future episode for sure. Yes. <laughs> but I mean, the biggest, it, about 40% was paper fibers, you know, uh, paper products, and then other percentages. Now, uh, one of the kinds of trash, and I will say trash, 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 don't recycle dirty diapers. It was 4% of the landfills with dirty diapers. It was, it was fascinating. And the reason this falls under good news, I think, is that we have nowhere to go but up with this. (laughs) We have, it's a, it's a positive thing that so much has the potential to be recycled. Now it's just trying to do the hard work of, you know, changing minds, changing the companies or the process and um, trying to open up those markets and find ways to 
to get the stuff recycled. So. so there's a lot of potential, but it was going to require a lot of work and change if, if we're to get to that, like perfect hundred percent, whatever yeah. <laughs> score, but, but it's, it, it, like you said, it's good to know that there is a uh, room for, um, positive improvement when it comes to yes, this kind of stuff. I thought it was like, that's a high percentage of yeah. stuff. And some of it, again, could be recycled or just avoided if you refuse certain things, or let's say you mulch your grass instead of bagging it and sending it like, that's a very achievable thing for most people. You yeah. could mulch it and leave it. And then it's not part of that percentage. Yeah. So, <laughs> well, very good. All right. Well, Rachel Rodocker, are there any final thoughts you would like to share with our talking trash podcast <laughs> listeners? Episode one. Oh, uh, nothing pops to mind, but thank you for having <laughs> us. We're excited to be talking about these things. I do think that this is an important topic. I think I'm just hopeful that people will want to listen and learn with us. Um, we're still learning. So yeah. again, things might change episode to episode. But well, and, and, and I would say uh, we would encourage anybody who's listening, if you've got questions or yes. um, topic suggestions, please email WJER at WJER.com. Yes. Uh, we want to know what you want to know. Um, we're we're kind of basing this on a lifetime of questions and trying to do the right thing. But if there's <laughs> something in particular you want to know about, Rachel Rodocker is our go-to expert on all things. I will do my best to find the answers. (laughs) That's right. (laughs) All right. Well, Rachel, thank you for your time today. And this has been episode one of Talkin' Trash presented by WJER Radio. I'm Hannah Hartman. We'll see you next time.